Welcome to the horizontal mill. The horizontal mill is an excellent second operation machine if we want to set up and mill slots or channels or have a specific job for it. Most of the functions are very similar to what we showed you in dealing with a vertical mill. However, the horizontal does offer some advantages. The heart of any good machine is having a good, tight, accurate machine, something that's not been wore out. And we want to mount a good vise on it. This is a Kurt Angelock knockoff type vise. We've machined some special jaws for it to hold some specialty parts. Again, we talked about the horizontal mill being able to perform a variety of functions, and one of them is high production in a gang application once we have the machine set. With these special jaws, we simply clamp our parts in place. We can do seven parts at one time just by stacking them in and cutting the slots that you see in these parts. We've got a large diameter cutter there, multi-flute. Look at how many teeth we have around the cutter. So that tells us we're not going to be turning very fast. Most of the horizontal cutters turn at a very slow RPM. We have a lot of specialty form cutters that are available, such as this cutter that we see here. Okay, This is a convex cutter. You can see again the multi-flutes for cutting a radius channel. We've got very thin, again, multi-flute cutters for cutting slots or sawing material into piece. And then we also have larger, wider tooth cuts for making larger surface cuts or slots in something. We've got an overarm here that supports the arbor. This is the arbor that we see here, and we can also stack multiple cutters across the arbor where if we want to do a gang milling operation and make several cuts at one time or a special form cut. The best way in aligning your tools and stuff with the horizontal mill are simply to bring the cutter up in contact with the, with the workpiece knowing the dimension of the cutter itself and come in contact with an edge. We can't use an edge finder on a horizontal mill because we don't have a spindle by which to grab it. So we'd simply bring the cutting edge of our cutter up against our part, lower the bed, and then calculate the distance, the center of the cutter, and the center of the part in order to get whatever offset that we need for milling that special slot. Okay, so again, the imagination in dealing with a horizontal mill is important. If you're in the gun trade, a horizontal mill is very useful in fluting rifle barrels. We would build a special fixture that's set on the mill. Obviously, we would need a much larger horizontal mill than this, but all of the principles are the same. We've got the bed, the knee, the overarm, the arbor assembly, our hand wheels on the XY axis, a way to raise and lower the bed or the knee of the machine, and then the Y axis as well to be able to locate the flutes on our part. Okay, we want to use plenty of cutting fluid. We want to use good sharp cutters when we're dealing with a horizontal. The machine starts vibrating and trying to jump across the floor. The machine's talking to us. It's telling us something's wrong. Usually our setup is not rigid. Our cutter's getting dull. Stop the machine, pull the cutter out, and take a look and make whatever corrections are necessary in order to get a smooth running machine. Let's go ahead and turn the machine on now and we'll simulate a milling operation for you. Okay, we were going to mill over the, across the top of our slots. We would simply engage, run our hand wheel over, and away we go. Now you'll notice the rotation of the cutter. Remember when we talked earlier in the milling series about climb cutting or conventional milling. It's real important when using a horizontal machine that our heavy duty bulking cuts are done in a conventional mode. The cutter is coming around this way and scooping up the workpiece into the metal. We can use a very fine climb cut for a finished pass if we want to, but we don't want to get in the habit of taking a heavy cut in a climb fashion. It's really rough on the machine. It'll have a tendency to suck the parts out of the vise or whatever tooling fixture that we're doing. Okay, so take moderate passes. Always use it in a conventional pass, scooping the metal out from the workpiece. You'll have power feeds on the tables, depending upon the complexity of the machine. Uh, Cincinnati and Niagara 
Those are some popular horizontal mills. These happen to be made by the folks at Hardinge. Many of you will be familiar with them. Hardinge builds a lot of precision machinery and tooling for the machine shop trades. These are an older machine. I've got a pair of them. I use them for specialty setups and making scope mounts, scope bases, machining my parts for uh, the lug raceway and chamber cleanout tools. So having a little horizontal can fill the gap in a machine shop for little specialty parts. Let's take a look at another one that is set up in a little different mode where we are using a conventional end mill in a horizontal position. This is a second machine and it's set up a little bit different than the first. You'll notice we've got a conventional end mill mounted in a 5C collet. The little hardinges are versatile in that we can use them in the overarm method with a conventional horizontal cutter or we can reverse the overarm bar, take off our arbor itself, replace it with a 5C collet of various sizes to accommodate a conventional end mill. If we were having a special application or tooling where we wanted to machine a part in this fashion or surface the top of it, cut a slot, whatever, this would be the ideal second operation using a horizontal type machine. When you set your machine up this way, it's a good idea to reverse the overarm support. We've got a tapered threaded nose on the other end. We don't want to bung up the threads and we don't want the overarm sticking out here interfering with whatever workpiece we may have on the, on the bed. We can bolt something directly to the bed using the clamping techniques that we showed you earlier. We can mount a vise here, a little tooling fixture that we have in order to make that second operation. Basically same machines, we can adjust the bed to mill an angled slot. You'll see a degree setting here on the bottom of the mill bed itself. We can also mount a dial indicator on the overarm or on the arbor collar here to be able to dial indicate a part, fine tune our bed based on the rail slots or a tooling fixture that we may have mounted on the machine. So versatile mill, again we've got table movement in the x-axis as well as the y raise and lower the bed with the hand wheels. These are light duty horizontal machines, great for the second operation in the machine shop.